There is nothing like the feeling when your coworkers discover your YouTube channel. Hey friends, welcome to another video. Welcome to my San Francisco apartment, actually. I'm so sorry, everything is still not yet fully furnished, but once everything is, trust me, you guys will be getting a full apartment tour, which I'm so excited about. Anyways, for today's video, I honestly have been wanting to do this for quite a while now. I just, with all the moving and the traveling, there was just so much other stuff to film that I never got around to filming this one. So I thought now would be the perfect time to just sit down and give you guys a full, like formal introduction and say hi and explain who I am and let you guys know me a little bit better because I know you've gotten to see little glimpses of my life here and there throughout all my various videos, but I feel like I don't know, have we really gotten to know each other yet? I, I, I don't know. So I thought today would be the perfect time. It's actually, today is Sunday, September 26th. I'm actually going to be filming and uploading this on the same day. So this is amazing. I feel like we'll be truly connected because it's going, like you're about to see this a couple hours after I'm filming this. So let's go ahead and dive into this. Starting with, where are you from? I am from Southern California, which I feel like by default, a lot of people think I'm from Los Angeles, which is not the case. I'm actually from a suburb far south of it, like a 45 minute drive away from LA. I'm from Orange County, which you might have heard of because they had like the real housewives of Orange County or something like that. I forgot what that TV show is called, but Orange County is also where Disneyland is. And that's pretty much where I tell people where I'm from because most people know where Disneyland is. So I was born and raised in Southern California, been there all my life, all up until college. Where is your family from? So my parents are from Taiwan. There's like two major cities in Taiwan. It's Taipei and Kaohsiung, and my parents are from Kaohsiung. So that's where most of my relatives still are. They came over in their late 20s, ended up in Orange County, had me and my sister, who is three years older than I am. And I grew up in a mainly Mandarin Chinese speaking household, which then later in life kind of evolved into Chinglish, which is what I call sort of our mix of Chinese and English that we speak. And as a first generation American, I will say that when I was younger, I definitely became like the spokesperson for my mom at least. I think it's a lot harder to pick up a new language when you're in your late 20s. So I became the person making all the phone calls and talking to a lot of customer service reps and whatnot. If any of my first gen fellow people can relate, we literally became like their personal translator slash assistant, I felt like at times. My grandparents who were around a lot when I was a kid also spoke Taiwanese, which is a very much older language of Taiwan. And so I can understand Taiwanese, but I can't speak it. So it's unfortunate, but I'm glad I can at least understand it. Where do you live now? San Francisco. I absolutely love it here. I actually have this like little goal of mine to live in a couple of the major cities for a year each. So San Francisco is the first one I want to hit. And then I want to do New York City next. I'm not sure where I'll go after that, but definitely want to do San Francisco for a year, get to know it a bit better. And then we'll see where we go from there. How old are you? I am 22 turning 23 next month. Actually, I am indeed a Scorpio. I feel like I very much relate to what the common Scorpio stereotypes are, like the ambition, the determined in like a problematic way. That is definitely me. I am the kind of person who will go out of my way to get what I want and I'm just a very stubborn person. I'm also the kind of person who like needs to try something for myself to actually fully believe it. Like let's say someone was trying to unlock a door, couldn't do it. I would personally have to go and try to all the different ways to unlock that door to a point where I'd probably nearly break down the door before I give up and admit that that door is indeed a door that cannot be unlocked. Like I am just, I'm that person. I also pretty much relate with the fact that like Scorpios are always like all in black and more like dark and you know, moody. I feel like that's me or at least the black clothing is definitely part of it. I would say 75% of my closet is all black. I mean, as you can see, how tall are you? I am 5'3". Okay, well, I'm 5'2 and a half, which rounds to 5'3". And I am a short person. I'll admit I'm a short person. I always have to shop at the petite section and things are always too long on me. And all my taller friends always make it a point to point out that I am much shorter than they are. But alas, I do not have tall parents and this is where we're at. Actually, fun fact, when I was younger, I don't know if this is all Asian families or just mine, 
but my mom did the most that she could in order to help me grow taller. Like apparently in the Chinese culture, there are like herbs you can take, basketball is supposed to make you taller. There was like this like a uh, bar that she installed in our backyard that you're supposed to hang from for like a minute or two a day and it was supposed to help you grow taller. None of that worked, I'd just like to say, but my mom tried so much to help me and my sister grow taller and we are both 5'3". What is your channel about? What videos do you plan on making? So I kind of have like three different buckets that my content really falls into. The first one is stuff like this, where it's just about my life, vlogs, food, just about my real life and just capturing that. The other is product management. So sort of the content that I wish I had to watch back when I was initially recruiting for product and just my career learnings as I go through my current role as a product manager. And then my last little bucket is sort of the, what I wish I knew at my younger ages. And specifically, it's been more focused on college so far, but also like my coffee chatting videos. It's very much like advice to my younger self type videos, I would say. Where did you go to college if you haven't seen those Berkeley videos. I went to University of California, Berkeley, which is actually a 20 minute drive away from San Francisco. It was my first introduction to the Bay Area. Go Bears! What did you study slash what were you involved in in college? I studied computer science and business administration and outside of academics, I was in a consulting club, which if you go to Berkeley or have read about club culture at Berkeley, it is quite insane and I would say toxic, but it introduced me to a lot of my closest friends today. And oh, I was also in a, um, a part-time job. So I worked in Sproul Hall as a operations coordinator for this program that helped manage classrooms after hours. And so that, that was also a big part of my college career. I think I was in that role for like two or three years, something like that. What do you wanna do with your life? So fun fact, in the past, I actually really wanted to be an actress. This was back when I was like in elementary school, middle school. And then when I got to high school and started realizing that I should probably figure out what my passions were, that's when I started pivoting more towards like wanting to do journalism slash communication slash public relations, something in that field. So I actually applied to all my colleges as a communications major. I really thought that's where I would end up. And then once I got to Berkeley and learned more about the tech world and computer science, I thought I wanted to be a software engineer. And then I tried out software engineering and then I realized I don't want to do software engineering. And that's how I ended up in product management because I met someone who explained to me what that was and I fell in love with it. And now a year and a half later, I absolutely love where I am. And I'll probably just keep going in this career. I, I, I honestly don't know what's after product management, but for now, at least for the next few years, I'm very much happy where I am now. What do you like to do in your free time? This, I love YouTube, I love content creation, I love editing, I love interacting and talking with you guys. I also love watching YouTube. I'm actually a bigger fan of sort of like real life content. So I'm talking vlogs, sometimes reality TV, I know it's scripted. I actually prefer that to real like TV shows and whatnot. I just like getting that glimpse into other people's lives, which is why I think it's so fun to capture some of my own life and share it out with you guys and you know, let you guys into a, what it's like to be a product manager working in San Francisco, I guess. Outside of sort of content creation and that sort of entertainment that I like to watch, I also love baking, I love cooking. I, at some point during the pandemic, was baking a new type of cookie every day, which went on for quite a while. This is what happens when you finally get your hands on like a 25 pound bag of flour from Costco because there was a shortage at some point. So yeah, that was all I really had to work off of and I really wanted to use up the entire bag of flour, which I did end up doing. And so several, several different types of cookies later, um, I still have not learned actually. I still have not learned at all what makes a good cookie, but I can sure follow a recipe. Something new that I actually wanna try is also just learning more skills. I was never big into sports when I was younger, but now that I'm somewhat settled in San Francisco, I wanna sign up for classes like tennis, pickleball, golf, pottery, art, just try out new things. And I'm curious if there's anything I'll be like naturally good at or just things that I'll end up really loving. Oh, and I absolutely love traveling. So this past year we actually road tripped through from San Francisco to Reno, to Salt Lake City, to Denver, 
to Albuquerque, then Phoenix. Oh wait, we also popped into Texas for a hot second and then to LA and Seattle and New Jersey and New York City and Chicago. So definitely love, love, love traveling. That's a huge thing that I can't wait to like go back to international travel specifically. Been to so many Asian countries and oh my gosh, I just love it there. I love seeing a completely different culture and the food always just amazing. Do people at work know about your YouTube channel? So yes, People at work do know about my YouTube channel. It came up in a very stressful way for me. I never really like promoted my channel to friends of mine. It just wasn't something like, I felt like the content that I started out making, I guess was more for people to discover if they were looking for specifically product management content. So I didn't wanna like push out to my friends like, hey, watch me talk about my experience becoming a product manager because I didn't feel like that'd be content that they'd be interested in. It was more so content that I feel like people would be looking for. So I never pushed out my content, but a coworker of mine was starting to write product management articles and whatnot. And I think she was just doing a bunch of Googling, stumbled upon my YouTube channel and sent a link. So I had no idea she found my YouTube channel. She sent a link into a chat with my boss and my boss's boss and like 20 other PMs because this is just like this fun, casual water cooler chat we have. And I cannot explain to you how much I was freaking out when this happened, okay? There is nothing like the feeling when your coworkers discover your YouTube channel. It is so stressful. I think the initial feeling I had, which I, I'm sad that I had this feeling, but the first feeling I had was definitely embarrassment. It's just, I had Trader Joe's videos or I still have Trader Joe's videos on my YouTube channel. And to think that the people that I'm incredibly professional with can watch a video of me trying and reacting to Trader Joe's food, just like, oh, it's so cringy to me. I, yeah. It's just, it's something else. So it's something that I'm working on being better about, being okay with, because I shouldn't be embarrassed about the content. I'm not embarrassed about the content I have. I, I'm very proud of the content I have. I'm glad people are finding it helpful. And it's just, I don't know. It's It just makes me cringe internally when someone I'm super professional with has access to the more, not so professional side of me. All right, let's quickly run through some favorites. Favorite TV show, absolutely hands down Friends, hands down. So all throughout college, I always watched Friends because I always need something like when I'm studying. So I always played Friends in the background. I've watched each episode, I wanna say minimum three times. Favorite YouTuber, Claudia Saluski. Oh my God, what, what an inspiration. I think she just strikes that perfect balance of capturing her life and being able to look back on it for herself, but also doing it in such an artistic way and in a way where all the content is very helpful slash fun slash just enjoyable to watch. Like I wish, I wish I could do that. I'm really working on it. She has such like a good eye for making content like that. And I guess her life is also just perfect for it. So I don't know, I just, I aspire to have a channel like hers one day. Favorite place I've ever been to? Definitely Japan, specifically Kyoto and Tokyo. The food, how clean it was, how efficient their subway system is, the people there. Oh my goodness, there's just so much good about Japan. Also like weird fun fact, Japan loves fruit. Like they have very unique fruit there, really unique, expensive, beautiful fruit there. All their grocery stores always have just like the most perfect looking fruit. And as someone who's love, 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 I love fruit. It being in Japan and having access to perfect fruit was just incredible. Favorite music. I am so basic when it comes to music. And I guess the best way to explain it is my go-to playlist on Spotify is today's top hits. Yeah, I know. Favorite podcast. So the ones I listen to religiously, definitely Snacks Daily. And I'm also a big fan of the vlog squad and just the friendships, the relationships there. I feel like I like listening to those podcasts as 
I just feel like a friend that's a fly on the wall listening to a group of friends conversation. So Zane and Heath unfiltered and also uh, views, views is back with um, Jason and David. So I like listening to those sort of in the background as I go about my day doing whatever I'm doing because I feel like it doesn't take you don't have to like fully listen to it. You know what I mean? Favorite food. So you've probably seen me make this in my videos before. So my favorite food is like this blueberry yogurt bowl that I always make. I always put like a crunchy granola on it. Something about yogurt, berries, and granola though. Best mix. I'm telling you, I eat it nearly every morning and I still haven't gotten sick of it. My other favorite food is definitely a loaded salad. Okay, hear me out. I know, I know. Salad is a weird favorite food to have, but I'm not talking like a simple restaurant salad, okay? I'm talking like a loaded salad. My favorite salad place of all time is actually this place called Evergreens in Seattle. And I'm so sad that it's a local chain in Seattle. If they had it, like if I could and I had the money, I would buy them and I would spread them all across the United States because I have truly never found a salad spot like that one that had, they have like 30 plus toppings. It's something insane. So to the people out there who don't like salads, I'm telling you, you just haven't had a good salad. There's definitely a salad for you out there. All right, that wraps up the favorites. How can I reach you? How can I ask you questions about product management? So I'm working on being a lot better about this. I just, I'm so sorry to anyone who's emailed me and left comments that I haven't gotten a chance to respond yet. I am going to actually pivot over to trying to use Instagram as a place to connect and say hi and talk with you all. So if you'd like to check me out, I'm at Evelyn Shares on Instagram. You'll see it's a pretty dead account because I don't really use Instagram, but I'm hoping to start using it a lot more. So follow me there, say hi to me there. And once again, it's just hard because I'll be honest, like. The main reason why I made this channel was to take a lot of those like one-on-one -on -one product management conversations and turn them into something that was scalable and that a lot of other people could listen to and find incredibly helpful. So it's hard because as much as I'd love to talk to everyone one-on-one, -on -one, answer their questions one-on-one, -on -one, I feel like it helps a lot more when you leave public comments on my YouTube channel so that I can respond publicly there so like everyone can see and you know, also respond. I'm hoping that as much as possible, I keep all those conversations public if it's about product, if it's about, if it's general questions that apply to everyone. But if you just wanna stop by, say hi, let me know how you're doing, have any specific questions, then just DM me. I'm at Evelyn Shares on Instagram. Okay, and that is all for today's video. Thank you guys so much for joining me in my little kitchen corner. I hope you guys got to know me a bit better through this video. Let me know if you have other questions that you'd like to know about me down in the comments below. I'm happy to make some sort of like part two to this get to know me video. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you in the next video. Bye. This lighting keeps, dude, it's so zoomed in. Get out of here. <laughs>